I feel like anybody I talk to who does this kind of job is anxious, and if they're not, they're sociopaths. <laughs> Top of the morning to you laddies. 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 Top of the morning to you. Top of the morning to you laddies. I'm Sean McLaughlin, I go by Jacksepticeye Online, and I make YouTube videos. It's kind of a mixed bag. I started off playing video games on my channel and just reacting to those, and it blew up out of nowhere, and then I just kind of branched off, and now I do everything. I just react to content, I do games, I do sketch comedy, I've made short films, I've done interactive media, so for now it's kind of like whatever's creative and whatever's fun. I don't really tie myself to one genre anymore. Yeah, I started kind of very, very end of 2012. My plan initially was to do imitations or like impersonations and then do content around that and kind of be that character. And then I did it once and was like, this is terrible, I shouldn't upload this. So I was just watching a lot of people who would play games and kind of react to them and have fun that way. And I, I thought that that was really cool. I just tried it out for myself to see if it would work. And I, I really liked the sort of editing process and kind of curating it and getting in, okay, what's my idea? What's my line to go through? And obviously it's all pretty bad when you start off, but it was kind of fun to have a project to do every day. And I was kind of aimless in my life at that time. So I was like, I need, I need something to kind of like attach myself to. As I got better at it and more people started watching, it kind of snowballed really quickly and then I don't know, I was kind of in it before I realized I was in it. I didn't really have any time to think about it or overthink. <laughs> March, May, I kind of said to myself, right, I'll hit 1,000 subscribers before I go back to college in September. And it's, it's mid-July right now, and we already hit that goal. Just hit 2,000 subscribers on YouTube. Can you believe it? We just hit 400,000 subscribers! I can't believe I'm here sitting doing another subscriber milestone video two weeks after hitting 600,000. The channel is now at 700,000 subscribers. Congrats on getting the channel to 3 million subscribers! As of right now, the channel stands at 4 million people strong. Thank you guys so much for 11 million subscribers. Here is the one trick that I used to get 25 million subscribers on YouTube. And you can do it too. All right, are you listening? Get closer. I have no idea. I was in college at the time and when I finally started making like a decent living off of it, I started to earn enough to like pay rent and pay for amenities every month. And I, I was able to like rent a place on my own. I really started to be like, oh God, this is like my job now. I don't actually have to find work and actually do this full time. And I think that that was the big moment where I was like, okay, I don't know how long this will last. It could all fall apart in the morning because it's so volatile. It can go either way. And especially at those lower numbers, I, I didn't really know what was going to happen. I think people think it's easy that because you sit down and you play games, but I think there's so much more to it because when I started off, I'm like, I edit, I Photoshop, I record all the stuff. I do it multiple times a day. I did it five and a half years without skipping a beat twice every single day at the exact same time. And I think that sheer amount of effort that goes into it, like it, it is really, really hard work, but also comes the emotional side of it, which is a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress and trying not, you're like, there's no training for it. You kind of, you're, you're your own brand. If it grows quick and big like mine did, you kind of have to navigate that yourself and hope that you're dealing with it properly. And early on I wasn't because there was a lot of like, like stuff that I had to work out about burnout and trying not to overwork myself. And there's no, there's no one telling like, telling you like to pull yourself back a little bit. I've always been quite a social person. I, I, I like hanging out with people and I like talking with friends and playing games together. And I think when I was growing up in Ireland, there wasn't a whole lot of people that thought the same way I did and didn't play games the same way I did. And I thought it was some sort of a weirdo that like, why am I playing games for so much time? So when I was online, there was more people that did that. And when you meet other YouTubers who are doing the same job, they all kind of get you. And there's like an unspoken bond between you. Kind of like, yeah, say your truth. I get you. I would love to be that guy. I'd love to be like, I wake up 6 a.m. every morning. I meditate. I get my coffee in. I drink my top of the morning and I just, I comb my hair a thousand times and I just read my mantra to myself and then write down all my ideas and every one of them is great, so I have to just pick. 
but I'm not. I'm just like, I don't know. I didn't sleep well. My back hurts. <laughs> and then I just roll into it. it I, it's surprising that it's worked for as long as it has because I keep waiting for it to not work. But people still watch and I, I have that like imposter syndrome where I'm like, they're going to find out eventually that I don't know what I'm doing. I'm in a fortunate position where if I, if I attempt to do anything, I already have a built-in audience for it, which is what most new companies are trying to get, is how do we spread this to as many people as possible. And I'm just lucky enough I have a platform. I, I try not to take on the things that I'm not really excited about, and I think if I have a passion for it and I'm excited about it and I really want to do it, I think that shows a lot and people kind of follow along in the journey and it's kind of fun for them. And I think that's what people react to because they can tell that it's kind of coming from a good decent place and you're not trying to just pull the wool over their eyes and kind of like sell a product to them. But it's finally time to announce Cloak, which is a clothing company and a clothing brand that Mark and I have come together to try and create. Me and my friend Mark, or Markiplier as he's known on the internet, we, we came up with that idea together to, because we've done merch before and kind of like put our faces on stuff. But we were like, what, what would it be like if we went that extra step further and we kind of created something that had its own identity? And, and I think both of us kind of have a, an interest in clothing and fashion and uh, that sort of world. And how can like we put our spin on it? How can we add our voice to it and kind of like make it fun? And it was just, it was something really creative and fun to do. And I think both of our strengths kind of play to that aspect when we kind of like get in a room together and we bash out ideas together. We've done some cool, fun stuff with it and people have responded really well to it and the clothing is really high quality and we try and make it actually like really decent stuff for people to be able to get. I personally never want to do that thing where I'm just kind of like selling something and then never think about it again. And I think Mark is the same way where we're both sort of proud to put our names on it and kind of work on stuff together. And Especially with YouTubers starting brands, there's a sort of misconception about it sometimes and I we legitimately just wanted to make really really good coffee that you could drink day after day I made my own coffee company my own coffee brand and it is called top of the morning coffee I was just sitting down I was like I like coffee so much and I'm like, ah, can I make a coffee brand? I was like, I don't know if I can. Like, is that something that I'm even able to do? Do we know people that can make that happen? And then I thought of the name Top of the Morning Coffee and I was like, oh, now we have to do it. That name's way too good not to do. And the, the more we did it, the more I was like, oh, we, we could do something actually really cool with this and have fun with it. And it was, the, the more I got into it and understood how everything worked, the more potential I saw in it. And I thought it was really cool. So then I just kind of, ran with it and I was like, if this fails, it'll be, at least it's like a cool thing to kind of experience and get into. But um, we tried really hard to make it like a cool identifiable brand and got really into it. But I think the more we did it, we started to realize like, there's not much of my personality in the branding. And I'm, I'm quite a, like an energetic, lively person and try and be positive about a lot of things. So we rebranded it. We kind of looked at it and stood back and we're like, okay, it, it kind of looks like other coffee brands, but we wanted to stand out on its own. And that's why we came up with like the yellow bags and the new logo to kind of like be a bit punchier. And our, our mascot's like a sun character. So we were like, what if the bag looks like a ray of sun sitting on your shelf? And the more we talked about it, uh, we sat down with an agency and they kind of like asked me a whole bunch of questions and they were like, oh, so you're, you're all about this. And it was all about like absurd positivity. And I think they captured that quite well. I, I, I don't pretend to be like a business mogul where I'm going out and trying to be like a billionaire or anything like that. Um, I just try and make fun things that people can react to and kind of have like an emotional attachment to as well instead of it just being like yeah I buy it because it tastes good like it's it's so much more than that it's kind of like an experience and a, a lifestyle for people at this point. I want to do it all baby. Um, no I, I have tons of ideas I want to like like make comic books, I want to do narrative podcasts, I, I have like movie ideas, I have TV show ideas, I want to do more voice acting, I want to do more like mainline acting, because I'm in a very fortunate position that I get to like put my fingers in a lot of pies, I get to try out a lot of different things that a lot of people can't, so I, I don't want to take that for granted and I want to take advantage of it wherever I can. I think anybody that wants to be a creator should try, 
Um, it certainly afforded me a lot of great things in my life and I, all the people I know and the person that I am today is all because of that kind of stuff. So I'm not gonna say don't try it. I think it's really cool. It's, there's not one way of doing it. There's a million different ways to do it and people are really clever and really funny and I think if they get to show the world that in a short form or a long form or on Instagram, on Twitter, wherever you wanna do it, I think that's cool.